Hello Aidan, and thank you for asking me these questions. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to answer them. I've got time and I've got answers. So um, what I would like to do is just read your questions and then I will um, relay the answers back to you if that's okay. It's different to how we plan to do it, but that's fine. Uh, we're all starting to get busy again. And so, uh, so thank you for asking and this is me answers. All right, so Steve Hewlett, comedy ventriloquist. I've been doing this since I was 12 years old and I'm now 45. So uh, let's go with the questions. How are you and what do you do? Uh, that is what I do, uh, comedy ventriloquist. I've been doing that for um, many, many years and I started to learn ventriloquism when I saw one on television when I was 12 in 1987. So it was quite a... Um, a passion that I got straight away by watching a ventriloquist. He was called Jimmy Tamley, you can Google him, and he won the grand final with New Faces, which is the equivalent of Britain's Got Talent. And, uh, and so that's that little story. How did you get into ventriloquism? Well, uh, from watching Jimmy, I knocked on his door because he lived around the corner from me, and I asked him for lessons. And at the time, there was only books in the libraries. There was no internet back then. You won't believe this, Aidan, but there was no internet when I was a kid. And so I would hire the book out from the library, read it, love it, uh, learn more from that book, uh, more than what Jimmy taught me. Then I would take the book back uh, just to get it re-stamped again and bring it out again. And I kept it for about a year at least uh, until I was, um, well, until I learned the technique of the ventriloquist. And so that's really how I got into it. And then Jimmy started to uh, need me as a roadie. So I, I paid him back by roadieing for him for about 10 years. And then that 10 years, 12 to 22, actually I turned professional when I was 22. So I had an apprenticeship really for 10 years. How am I so well known today? Uh, primarily it's Britain's Got Talent. The Got Talent uh, franchise around the world has made many ventriloquists um, names these days, Terry Fater, Paul Zerdin and Darcy Lynn and myself being the only successful ventriloquist on Britain's Got Talent it's uh, you know to get into the finals so it's kind of that's what's made me well known today uh, but I was working for 18 years before Britain's Got Talent and building a reputation and after it I've done a lot more since Britain's Got Talent but I, I, I will say that Britain's Got Talent opened a lot of doors for me in my business what would you suggest to young kids wanting to get into professional comedy? Well, watch as much comedy as you can. I've got a lot of books actually, just uh, behind me. Uh, a lot of books on comedy. There's one on the comedy store. I'm reading the Comic in Inquisition. There's, there's loads of books. I'm dying up here, which means you're struggling on stage. The Great Clowns of American Television. Read as much as you can. You can do this online or you can go to your local bookshop. Uh, go to an old bookshop because you can get some really great books in an old bookshop, uh, antique bookshop, and they'll have all of the greatest biographies. I learned so much by reading biographies, and I'm hosting a podcast right now called Eyes and Teeth. I interview all of my favourite comedians, comedy actors, actresses, and I'm learning uh, uh, through, their, through their answers of my questions. I'm learning the process of actually getting a comedy act to where it is today in, the, in their careers. So um, the, the best thing to do is to read people's biographies and see how they got there. The reason uh, I am where I am today is because I've worked really hard at it. I've done every show I possibly could, charity-wise and um, talent show-wise, just to get my name out there. And then I started to do holiday parks. And my act started to build once I got 100 dates for a holiday park in 1997. Uh, a whole season down the south coast of England and I honed my act. That's the thing. You write yourself an act, you hone it and try and get it spot on every night and you just keep redoing it in front of a brand new audience. And 98 came along, 99 I worked in Benidorm for three months. It's really about consistency and, and working, working your act over and over again until you get it right years and years before you even touch the television screens and so um, don't do TV until you're completely ready and it's all about hard work. How many hours does it take to become a comedian ventriloquist artist? 
Well, uh, there's two different aspects to this. Uh, as a ventriloquist, you have to learn the technique, which is uh, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, G, G, H, H, I, I, J, J, K, K, L, L, M, N, 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 O, O, P, P, Q, Q, R, R, S, S, T, T, U, U, V, V, W, W, X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z. That's the technique. Don't move your lips. A U D C D E F G H I J K L N L T Q R S U V W X Y Z. See ya, see ya, see ya, see ya. That's the technique. Then you need to learn a bit of comedy. So, how are you? I'm okay, yeah. And why are you always around? Because I always come in handy. Handy, handy, handy. Add a little bit of jokes to it. I made that up, by the way. <laughs> right on the spot. You put me on the spot. You're not even here. And so, uh, yeah, adding lots of comedy to it. The comedy writing is the hardest part because everything's been done. If you can be original, innovative, uh, not an easy word either, in a, in, innovative. Innovation is what you need for a comedy act. And to be visual and uh, vocal as well, you know, vocal jokes and visual jokes is fantastic. To be a comedian, it, it's great if it comes natural. If you're funny when you're out with your friends and you're making them laugh anyway, then be an actual comedian, add that aspect to your ventriloquist show. As a ventriloquist, it has to be in the character, so you separate yourself from that character, and this character has to have its own personality, and separate from yours, as well as voice as well. So you're, you're puppeteering, ventriloquizing technically, just like this, and you're also adding some comedy. So that's good, isn't it? These are three different things that we are doing. And you're also acting as well. <gasps> no, you're not. Yes, you are. <gasps> so it's all about the reactions and the comedy, the acting, puppeteering, and the technical ability. Wow. I'm probably answering too many, too many words in these answers. I hope that's all right for you. What programs or groups do you suggest young people to get to train in? College, uni, etc. Um, if, if you're talking about the comedy world, um, start off uh, doing warm-up sets or uh, that's what they call them in the comedy clubs. You just go on and do a five-minute set and uh, and that's how you build your material really, by just writing three to five minutes. Go and do that. But you do need something to fall back on. So university and college, if you can get some drama courses behind you, really study some acting, singing. If you can sing, great. You can add singing to the show as well. There's singing in ventriloquists, there's singing impressionist ventriloquists, uh, or there's just comedy ventriloquists, where it's just like a stand-up with a dummy. You can do all different aspects of it, but if you have a background uh, or something to fall back on, if the ventriloquist comedy act doesn't work, Sorry about that, uh, my iPhone got full, so that's what happened there. Uh, one thing is, if you need something to fall back on, then uh, maybe technical college, uh, go learn about uh, media and, you know, cameras, lighting, sound, and all that stuff, which I still know nothing about at 45. But here we are, we're back again. Let's try and squeeze this in. We've got a few more questions to get through. So don't forget, have something to fall back on as well. So you could learn uh, singing, acting, uh, dancing, instruments, play instruments, all of these things can go into an act. You can learn some magic, you can do impressions. Um, so can you imagine that if you could do all that in one ventriloquist act, then all the characters have different um, things that they can do uh, down to your talent. But have something to fall back on as well. Uh, you may want to work behind the cameras in television or something. So go to college, go to university. Uh, that's great. If you just, like me, really into ventriloquism you can go to a convention over in kentucky in america they have a ventriloquist convention there's loads of platforms you can go to online um, like the iva the international ventriloquist association you can connect with uh, all of those groups as well and on facebook loads of ventriloquist groups on facebook if you want to learn or just w want to know a little bit more about the ventriloquist world could you tell people about new projects you're doing uh, I have a couple of projects that happened in lockdown, lockdown number one last year, which was 2020. I don't even know what year it is. It used to just be the day that I got mixed up. And so I started to, uh, well, actually 20 years ago, I started to write a book on ventriloquism. And in lockdown, I started to edit the book, which means I'm nearly finished. And I'm nearly finished. I was doing some more this morning. It takes a while because this is... This is a, a whole passion that I've put in over the last 20, probably 30 years, because there's letters that I wrote to Ventriloquist that is in the book, 
uh, when I was starting out. So uh, all of my life of ventriloquism is in the book. I've interviewed ventriloquists all over the world and those interviews are in the book and there's loads of different projects that I've worked that is ventriloquist based that is all in the book and so it's, it's a whole cavalcade of uh, wonderment if you like the world of ventriloquism of course and people in comedy, magic and the art of puppetry and ventriloquism is all um, are all interested so I, I'm hoping my book will do quite well and there's also you know fans out there that love to see a ventriloquist they will learn so much about nearly all the ventriloquists that you know about they're all in my book so uh, hear their stories about how they got inspired and and what spurred them on as well and uh, and you'll hear about all of my history in that book and also there's another thing I really love which is comedy and uh, over the last eight months I've been interviewing comedians, comedy actors, comedy actresses, uh, clowns and comedy magicians everything comedy based really is sitcom, sitcom characters and uh, talking about their careers and great moments of, of their life and so I've I've interviewed a lot of them I've worked with over the years, some of them I'm just fans of. So I am doing a podcast, that's what, that's what that is. Um, okay, this is, I've lost the light now on this. This is one thing about um, talking about having something to fall back on, the technical side, which I'm not great at, I'm doing all this on my own. So uh, have that to fall back on. There's another lesson for you and the eyes and teeth podcast uh that's talking to comedians it's called eyes and teeth you can get on apple podcasts anywhere you can get podcasts it's really there so i hope you enjoy that what sparks people into getting into ventriloquism and comedy i think it's just seeing other ventriloquists or seeing comedians think oh i can do that or i'd love to do that and so the spark really is like going through youtube and saying oh i watch a ventriloquist oh hang on I can do that technique or I'm funny and then it sparks you really to get up there and do it yourself. How old were you when you got into ventriloquism comedy? When I got into ventriloquism I think I said earlier I was 12 years old and the the comedy is the most difficult part. I didn't really start writing comedy till I got into my early 20s. I was 23, 24 when I started to read biographies of comedians and I started to really enjoy books. I started to really write comedy. I started to write a sitcom. I've got ideas for movies. I, I've written scripts, um, my own scripts, and I've written scripts for other people. But uh, it's because I surround myself with comedy. You can see VHS tapes, age in which you won't even know what they are. Uh, they're hours and hours of comedians and ventriloquists that I've watched over the years and studied. And, and now I'm just going through them day by day uh, when I get a chance in between my writing the book and the podcast editing but I, I watch one every couple of days uh, and then throw it in the bin uh, just, just so I'm not throwing away some archives that I need for the future but it's always good to watch other comedy and that sparks it off really that's that's what gets people interested how was your BGT experience and how would you encourage kids who want to go onto a talent show like BGT or age Okay, the last couple of questions. How was your BGT experience and how would you encourage kids who want to go on AGT, BGT, C, B, G, T, T, A, B, G, T, A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Uh, you know what I mean? So, uh, my experience was great. Some of my friends that have done it, their experience has not been great. So, uh, encouraging them to go on it, I wouldn't do that. But if, if they're in a really good place where they've had five to ten years in the business and and they're loving their ventriloquist act. There's a young lad called Max Fulham. Uh, Google Max Fulham. He's a young ventriloquist who's great. He will be perfect and he will probably win Britain's Got Talent because he's got the, the, the comedy skills, the technique, the characters. Max Fulham is a great one to look out for. But I don't think he needs Britain's Got Talent. I think that he would be good. I think he's going to come through, do his own TV show without it. So. But if you're, if you're encouraged to do a show like that and, and you want exposure, you just want experience behind the camera, then go for it. If you've got a five, ten minute act or you've got an hour, because you're going to need to go on tour after you do Britain's Got Talent. That's what I did. Uh, if you want to go for it, then you have to just hone, practice, practice, practice and get your act um, pristine. You know, timing, uh, whether it's comedy, singing or whatever you do. 
just make sure that you've honed it and it is ready for a wider audience because there's nothing worse than going on a TV talent show and you're not ready to perform that material. I've made that mistake. I made that mistake 15 years before I'd done Britain's Got Talent. So I was ready by the time I was 37 I, and it took that long for me to get ready uh, as an act um, to go on to Britain's Got Talent. So uh, go for it, but only if you're ready. But it, it's not for everybody. I mean, you could think that you're going to win this show. You go on it. And I got further than I, I hoped, which is great. But once I got to the finals, I thought oh, I could win this. And then it all changed on the night. Somebody threw an egg and what happened, happened. Uh, I could have won up until that moment. No one knows. Um, things change. Uh, so, so, you know, a friend of mine won Britain's Got Talent last year. The last Britain's Got Talent because uh, it's not on in 2021. Uh, so, so go for it if you're ready. So young people recognise you. Could you perform a short joke or routine that I'm known for? Yes. I've got my friend. I'm known for a character called Arthur Lager. You need a character people know you for. There was Keith Harris, Orville the Duck, Ray Allen with Lord Charles. There was... Um, Boris Johnson, Theresa May. Here we go. Here's uh, Arthur Lager. Hello, who's this? This is Aiden. Aiden, how are you, Aiden? Nice to see you. What are you doing here? Well, Arthur Lager, what we're going to do now is just a little routine. Mm. Okay. Oh, what? A routine. I don't remember those. <laughs> this is the routine. Um, you're just going to. Uh, you ready? Ah, count to ten in Spanish. Mm? Count to ten in Spanish. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to count in English. Can you speak Spanish? Can you? No. How the hell am I going to then? Here we go. One, uno, two, dos, three, tres, four, mm. four, and uno, do, uno, dos, to, go on. Uno, dos, three, tres, four, four, five, <laughs> five, 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 oh. Six o seven o eight o nine o and ten o. Do you know what? He's forgotten the act. <laughs> He's forgotten the act. So, gracias. That was our falaga, and uh, he's forgotten his Spanish. We haven't done a show for a year, so that was bound to happen. I'm going to leave it in because everything has to be perfected and everything has to be rehearsed. Okay. I'm sorry you're not there, so, so we, we, you know, we, we can't react to you, but we hope you enjoy these little clips.